Hi everyone and welcome to another video on Windows 11. As I've posted some videos earlier on getting Windows 11 installed on unsupported hardware, I noticed in some of the comments that a lot of people were wondering how the performance would be. Tests on officially supported hardware show that performance is more or less the same or even slightly better under Windows 11 in comparison with the same under Windows 10. But for unsupported hardware this might be different. One of the reasons for Microsoft to drop support for many older CPUs, basically anything older than Intel's Core Gen 8 or AMD's Ryzen 2000, is related to security. Windows 11 does Virtualization Based Security, or VBS, and Hypervisor Protected Code Integrity, or HVCI. In short, this allows to isolate parts of the memory from the op operating system and to check code integrity. For this to run in a performant way, it requires hardware support like a trusted platform module and mode-based execution control or MBAC on the CPU. TPM is not a hard requirement for this and mode-based execution control can be emulated. Obviously, this performs slower than a native hardware implementation, which these officially supported CPUs have. So, the topic of performance on unsupported hardware could be pretty interesting if you ask me. To get an idea in the real world if this really makes a difference, I will do some benchmarking on this Lenovo S20. I used this machine as well for another video where I explained how to overcome the hardware checks in order to install Windows 11. You can find a card here to that video in case you're interested. Now I have both Windows 10 and Windows 11 on that machine. But before doing the benchmarks, let me perform some hardware upgrades so we can at least run some games on this PC. I will upgrade the memory and add an additional 3x4GB of DDR3, which will bring the total to 24GB. And for the graphics, I will install this GTX 960, not the best you can get, but a good match with some older systems out there. Let's get these installed. Starting with the memory. And the video card. The GTX 960 will replace this Quadro 600. Remember that I mentioned in the disassembly video of this S20 that I wore PCIe power connectors? Well, these come in handy now. Time for a first boot. Looks like the memory is detected as expected and since we see something on the screen we can assume the video card is working as well. As you can see I have the option now to choose between Windows 11 and 10 on boot. On both Windows 10 and 11, I have the latest updates installed. The only driver that I provided myself is the one from Nvidia for the video card. On both OS's, I installed the same tools. If we have a look at the space consumption, it looks like Windows 11 is doing slightly better here. Let's start the benchmarking with Geekbench 5, one of my favorite benchmarking tools. First the CPU and memory benchmark. Then the Compute Benchmark. Slightly lower for CPU and slightly higher for compute for Windows 11, so very much in line with each other. Now drive performance. First the SSD.
then the rate array. Very similar performance as well here. Next benchmark that I will do is Browser Bench. This should give us some real life performance. Here we clearly see a difference. I repeated the test a second time to rule out a mistake in the testing on both operating systems, just to be sure, and this was the second result. Similar as the first time as you can see, and to be sure, this was even done after a reboot, so looks like browsing on Windows 11 will be more fluent. Now let's dive a bit more into gaming performance. I will start with 3 d Mark. These results are very, very similar, as good as no difference here. And as a final test, let's run the benchmark from GTA 5 in parallel, so you can compare for yourself. The settings are equal as I copied the settings.xml between the two installations. As far as I can see, this is running very much equal, and it looks like performance under Windows 11 is very similar to under Windows 10. Looks like performance, at least, is definitely not a reason to not perform an upgrade on a non-supported system. Thanks a lot for watching, hope this video helped you in case you were considering of upgrading. If you liked it, please leave a thumbs up, and if you like this kind of contents, don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel for more of the same. Thanks again and I hope to see you back here soon.